feeding time. I don't want to drink too much because if I peed on myself, then the risk of hypothermia would have been worse because it was so cold out there. Urinating would wet her clothing. In the bitter cold, it would freeze, speeding up the onset of hypothermia. Only Danelle's willpower has prevented it from already happening. <laughs> As the day wears on, the risk posed by the bitter cold lingers. But a new threat emerges. Inside her body, Danelle's injuries have taken a lethal turn for the worse. I started to feel this inflammation in my midsection, and it was kind of soft and squishy. And I remember as I tried to move, this whole jelly roll would sort of move almost like a water balloon or something. I remember thinking at the time, oh, it's, it's inflammation. It's not inflammation. It's far worse. Danelle's shattered pelvis has severed blood vessels in her pelvic cavity. She's been bleeding internally for a day and a half, starving her brain and other major organs of the vital oxygen they need for her to survive. Danelle is bleeding to death. Facing another night in freezing temperatures, Danelle is finding it much harder to stay in control. As she struggles to do her sit-ups. Worse still, she's beginning to hallucinate because of her blood loss and fatigue. where I could see the Milky Way, all I could see was these stripes in the sky. The second night was a lot harder. That first night, Taz kind of cuddled up next to me, and the second night, he, he didn't want to. He would come and check on me, but he didn't cuddle up next to me. He just kind of looked at me like, you know, what are you doing laying there? I don't think he knew what to do either. Yeah, he probably was, maybe he was thinking, well, should I leave and go get some dog food, you know, and take care of myself, or should I stay here with her? And the second I felt a lot colder to me, too. I felt long and cold. 